Rocket League has come a long way since launch, yet all the pros are still grinding free play. What's up with that? Well, today I want to talk about something so many players get wrong, which is how pros train versus how you should train based on your rank. And uh, spoiler alert, it's different. So yeah, plan for this video is to go over the three main ways we now have to train from free play to training packs to even workshop maps at the end, as well as the do's and don'ts of each of them. So whether you're grinding for SSL or you just want to be a freestyler, I guarantee you knowing the information in this video will save you hundreds of hours of training. By the way, if you're new here, I run Rocket League's number one live coaching program, the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside, we specialize in helping Diamond Plus players rank up in just six weeks or less. At the time of recording this, we have 89 of 100 seats taken for our Season X launch. So if you want to join the now over 1,000 players in the program, I'm looking for the last 11 people who want to grab that GC or even SSL title within the next six weeks. If that's you, DM me with the keyword top 10 over on Discord and we can talk details about coaching. Links down below. Otherwise, enjoy the video. Okay, let's talk about the three main ways to train. We'll hit free play, training packs, workshop maps. I'll go over the do's and don'ts of each ones. And then at the end, I'll jump into a little bit of a bonus with how I actually currently train, trying to push into SSL based on everything we talked about. Number one, free play. Why do all the pros only use free play? Well, for the longest time, I was actually really confused about this as well until I actually got to talking with Ghost Gaming's shock when I was recording my 30 days of playing with pros video. Basically, I ask Shock, I see you doing free play all the time. I see all these pros on Twitch doing free play all the time to warm up, to train. What should the average player do? Shock said, if you're the average player, let's say you're just trying to learn a mechanic, you're trying to pick up something new. He said the fastest way to do it is not free play. Instead, what free play is best for is really maximizing the speed of your current mechanics. It's not the best way to learn new ones. The way he picks up new mechanics is he focuses on them one by one, specifically using the other two methods with training packs and workshop maps, but we'll get to that later. The way he explained it, and the way I kind of understand free play is free play is the space where you work on honing in your mechanics and increasing the speed on stuff you already know. Free play is where you want to go to train things like recoveries, consistency, shooting, and more awkward situations that aren't related to like a specific car control or like specific mechanic, if that makes sense. With that being said, what should you do in free play versus what should you train more in training packs and workshop maps? Do's of free play. Do focus on hitting the ball consistently with power. Do focus on getting good reads on the ball and trying to hit it as fast as possible, even if you have to sacrifice a little bit of consistency to recover quicker. Don't go into free play and practice very specific slow mechanics. Going into free play and working on air roll or going into free play and working on things like air dribbling, like really just like slow setups. Those are the things where if you're in free play, you're kind of just shooting yourself in the foot. If you want to learn directional air roll, like this is where I have to be honest, workshop maps like rings are the best way to do it. If you want to learn very specific mechanics like air dribbles, ceiling shots, or flip resets, the best way to get started is probably training packs. I'm not saying you can't use free play to train any of these things. I just think it's not quite as efficient to just use the base game in free play without any plugins. The truth is free play is just kind of outdated for those things specifically. Now, that being said, there are two bonuses that I want to talk about related to free play that solve these problems and actually can help you train way, way faster if you understand how to use them. Number one is the new in-game plugins that Cyanix sort of stole from Bacchus Mod. And then number two, the free play checkpoint plugin, which if you're a long time subscriber, you'll know I love. First, let's talk about the in-game D-pad shortcuts. Like I said, normally the main problem with free play is that it takes too long to set up shots and you're better off training specific mechanics in places where you can just get more reps in like training packs or workshop maps. But each D-pad shortcut cut is good for certain mechanics, but there are some specific mechanics that you could train better in free play than you even can in like training packs using the D-pad shortcuts. So here's how I use them. Number one, the 
up D-pad shortcut. What this will do is it will spawn the ball on your car. So if you look at my screen here, you can use the up command to instantly spawn the ball on your car and practice things like flicks, carries, ground to air dribbles, or even fakes and power slide cuts. The up command is really, really good for that. It's probably one of my most commonly used. The second command I use a lot is the right D-pad. I think it's called launch ball, but the way I like to use it is to pop the ball. So if you combine this with up. So first you do start dribble and second you do launch ball using the right command. You'll pop the ball in the air and you can use this to practice ground to air dribbles really quickly. You can carry the ball across the map, recover, spawn it back on your car and just see how long you can keep the ball in the air. This is becoming like even more and more relevant at the higher ranks every day. So using this little combo is really, really good for training air dribbles in free play. Basically, whenever you lose control of the ball, you can just reset and start again. The third most common shortcut I use is the down D-pad shortcut. I think it's called take possession. And this one will just simply spawn the ball in front of your car. What it's good for is mainly wall setups. Now you can use it to practice things like power side cuts too, if you're just getting used to those. But the main thing I use it for these days, you hit down, you drive the ball to the wall and you get an easy air dribble, flip reset, ceiling shot setup, and you can do those pretty consistently. That one's pretty self-explanatory. But the last one, and this is one of the most underrated D-pad shortcuts you can use. You'll see a lot of pros use this because it's a really good shortcut and super slept on. It's the pass ball shortcut. And mainly what this sh shortcut is good for is shadowing situations. So basically you'll drive back at one of the nets and then you can use this shortcut to launch the ball at you practicing shadow saves, for example, catches on the ground, if you just wanna practice catches, and really anything where your car is backwards towards the net. This is honestly as good, if not better, than some of the training pack ways you could practice shadow defense. So give this one a shot, and I promise it will help you a ton with like shadow situations and just getting more comfortable with your car backwards, whether it's, you know, saves, redirects, backboard clears, literally anything where you're facing backwards on your side of the field, this short cut is a great way to wrap it out. That's the pad shortcuts. I know I've been rambling on a ton. The last important thing though, that I do want to mention in the free play section is the free play checkpoint plugin. Now I won't go too much into detail with how to use this or how to set it up because I do have other videos on that, that I've shouted on the channel before, but at base level, if you don't know what the free play checkpoint plugin is, it's a super cool plugin that allows you to basically save and rewind certain points in free play. So once you learn how to use it, you can can freeze frame certain shots and go back in time to get really, really targeted reps and just run a shot over and over and over again. For some of the lower rank players, this isn't super relevant, but if you're intermediate, higher ranked, you know, pushing into GC or even SSL, I know this shortcut is one of the only reasons I'm even half decent at flip resets. And if you want to learn some of the higher level mechanics, like precise double taps, precise flip resets, double resets even, don't sleep on this plugin. If you're higher ranked, give it a look. Okay, the second training method that is especially important for lower ranked players, like anybody between plat and even if you're below, like even below champ maybe, is going to be training packs. Now, the great side of training packs is just the sheer volume and like consistency that you can get in. If you're a lower ranked player and you need to learn a mechanic from scratch, you just have no idea how to do, going into a training pack is probably the best way to start out. For example, if you're trying to learn speed flips or wall play or, you know, just like some, I don't know, basic mechanics, maybe like simple air roll shots, backboard saves, like very specific scenarios, training packs should absolutely be your number one place to go. The other and final thing I will say about training packs is it is really easy to develop bad habits if you only train mechanics in training packs. For example, I think Waiten has talked about this in one of his previous tutorials, and I still mention these things a lot because it's so true. But when you do training packs, it's really easy to get into the habit of like pre-jumping shots way, way too early, um, or even like floating and going slow just so that you could hit like the perfect angle on a shot. Like a super common example is like on redirect training packs. I see so many people kind of just like jump up and like float for the ball and get really weak goals that probably wouldn't go in in game. What it always comes down to is mimicking game scenarios and actually challenging yourself. If the shot gets really repetitive and you're spending just 
far more time in training packs than you should be. It can get really easy to just go into autopilot and like score like weak goals and not really challenge yourself. And that's what I would caution you against when it comes to using training packs. The TLDR is training packs can be a super great resource, especially for getting isolated reps and really honing in on certain mechanics. That's how I would think of training packs and that's how I would fit it into the routine. Definitely something to give thought to at the lower ranks, but as you get better, what I'd probably recommend is you phase out training packs and really focus on free play scenarios as much as you can. That's kind of what you see most pros doing these days and I think it works best. Last but definitely not least, the third way to train that I really want to highlight, for those of you who can, is of course, workshop maps. Now, if you don't know, workshop maps have completely revolutionized the way like you're able to train in Rocket League since they dropped. The reason workshop maps are so good is because the scenarios they create can be so specific and so challenging that they really just can't even compare to in-game scenarios, like in, in, in a good way. For example, when it comes to rings, flying through a ring really precisely on a workshop map is something that will force you to make sure you're adjusting your car properly and you have good car control. And there's no real way to cheat it. Like in free play or in training packs, you can like score a goal or like hit the ball or do an air dribble or whatever it may be in a way that's not really like 100%, but that you can kind of get away with and still think you're learning. Workshop maps, on the other hand, are usually really detailed and really hard. And what that does is it challenges you and it forces you to learn. So with that being said, where do workshop maps fit in? In my opinion, workshop maps are best for training the long-term mechanics, I mentioned some of them earlier, that take a lot of repetition, little intervals over time that will compound into ultimately really good car control. The first things that come to mind are of course gonna be air roll um, and like power slide and dribbling. That's what workshop maps are really irreplaceable for. Rings maps like Less Rings, Speed Jump Rings 3 by DMC are some of my favorites for aerial car control. And then of course you have staples like Dribble 2 Overhaul and even harder now are like the Eversax Dribble Challenge and of course Manscaped Dribble Challenge by Lethemir. The thing about those is they're so challenging and they're so specific and they really force you to learn in a way that no other training can. So what that means is whether you're lower ranked or higher ranked, literally everybody I talk to, I don't think it's possible to start workshop maps too soon. Like I think some people overutilize free play. I think some people overutilize like training packs or just like spend too much time and, and don't really get much out of it. Workshop maps on the other hand are something that just by the way they're built, it is really hard to go wrong training a workshop map. Like if you train rings for 30 days straight, I guarantee you, you will get better. Whereas if you do like free play for 30 days straight, I can't guarantee you that your gameplay will be, you know, that much better if you're not like doing free play exactly the way I describe it. You're not doing it like really prior. Basically, it's just way easier to mess up doing the other training mechanisms. Workshop maps, if you can do them, you can't go wrong. Okay, those are the three main training mechanisms and what my personal beliefs on them are. Now, before you go and run into the comment section and tell me, but Luke, I love training packs. Why, 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 why'd you diss training packs? Why do you not like training packs? I wanna be clear, all of these training mechanisms are good. What's more important is that you find like ways to train that you enjoy doing and you do those over the long term than it is necessarily like doing what's perfectly optimal, right? Cause nobody can ever do that. So if you love free play, go do free play. If you love training packs, go do training packs. If you like workshop maps like me, great. You could kind of do what I do, but yeah, just remember that any training is better than no training. Find the routine. The best routine is the one you can stick to and you can adhere to. Not necessarily like the scientifically perfect one. Who, who cares about that? Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Scroll down and share this video with one of your ranked teammates who needs to learn how to actually train and hopefully it'll help them help you. Check out my Discord for more training resources. I have lists of training packs that I'm happy to send you if you DM me. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.